Okay, so now what we want to do is first, if you don't have hosting, you need hosting. And so the way to do that, uh, you can visit a site like GoDaddy, Bluehost. There's tons of host sites out there. GoDaddy's very cheap. Bluehost very cheap. I uh, HostGator. There's so many out there, and you can do your own research about you know which one you think has the best reviews. Uh, but if you're ultimately just looking to experiment, you you don't want to spend a lot of money. You can go to a site like this, uh, and you want a first you're going to want a domain and uh, a hosting account. So you need two things. So the domain, I uh, there's a lot of tools for you to search for your own domain, see what's available out there. I'm not going to cover that, uh, but real quickly, I will show you bustaname.com. It's a really cool and clever tool that allow you to uh, search for domains that are available, and it's real. It's instant. It's really cool. I. Uh, you can use it to to make just cool things. So let's say my my last name's Simon. I uh, go. So it shows you all these lists of I uh, domain names that begin with Simon. You can limit the domain names to ten characters. My name is uh, five. So see if there's any with six available. I mean, no, not at all. Seven. Yeah, Simon. You know. You a really cool thing for creating brandable domain names. And then also this is its own tool as well. So it gives you a lot of different options. Anyhow, find your domain name. Uh, they're very cheap to register a domain name. They're like, I don't know, $10 on average for a year. Um, and then you gotta have your hosting account as well. So hosting, uh, a site like GoDaddy, um, they give you a lot of different type of options of the type of hosting you want. Uh, web hosting, very cheap, $349 a month, I mean, absolutely cheap pretty much all of them contain what we need to have which is it includes PHP and uh, MySQL so with that said once you get your host your domain registered and your hosting account up and running you want to log in to the back end uh, like GoDaddy has its own they all have their own back end where you can control and manage your uh, your hosting account and you need to find uh, your databases section for MySQL and so when you uh, find that you want to create a new database and you do that by adding it in the back end like of the GoDaddy admin panel and give it a name like quote fuel for the MySQL database name so that'll be quote fuel and then You'll also need to specify a user and password for it. And so you can give the username, you know, whatever you want, and the password, whatever you want as well. After that, you're going to want to load up PHP My Admin. And that's something that's almost universal as well when it comes to being able to manage your database for MySQL. So PHP My Admin, once you are able to find that link and load it up, it'll ask you to log in and I uh, once you log in, you'll see your database. You can click on it, and there's currently no tables in the database, so we have to create a new one. So we can give it a name, and the name I uh, can simply be quotes, and then the number of fields that we want to go into that database. So I'm just going to put in, I think, just two fields, and then hit OK. And then once you do that, it's going to ask you to specify uh, the field name. So this is just going to be ID. And then this field name is going to be the quote. So very simple. Uh, the type here, the ID is just an integer. So for each quote that we add, it'll auto increment the integer. So be one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, the length of this, we'll just put in something like 11, uh, which means how many how high will it count to essentially, or how many characters it will be. Um, and then down here, auto increment, we want to check on as well. And I'll check on null as well. And then quote over here, this is not an integer. The quote I uh, can be, I think I'm just gonna use what's called uh, long, yeah. Yeah, long text, we're right, I should keep on going past it. There we go, long text. And that means we can put in just a very lengthy amount of text here, even though our quotes are going to be uh, relatively small. Uh, and then once we have that, we just hit go. Oops, no, I did not want to add a third one. I'm just going to hit save, see if it allows me to save it. There we go. <clears throat> so this is the table that's created. We have an ID and a quote field. Currently, there's nothing, there's no records in it though. So if you hit browse, it's not going to let us because there's no records, there's no quotes yet. So we can just manually insert a quote here 
And basically, if we just specify the quote, so we'll use the quote that we've been using before. Um, and that is, sweat is pain leaving the body, or weakness, wait, not pain. <laughs> weakness leaving the body, okay, whatever. Um, and just hit go. We'll do another one. Oh, get rid of that. Actually, I'm gonna I want to make these all cap out by by default. So, take care of your body. Oops. And it's the only place you have to live. And then just hit go. And then now, if we hit browse, it shows both of our entries into this database. Um, this is where the app's gonna pull it from. So I'm gonna add several more um, and I'm gonna pause it and I'll come back and just show you real quick what I did. All right, that's enough right there. So I've added 12 um, very simple quotes or whatever based around motivation and fitness and all that stuff. Uh, so that's all we have to do on that front. Um, now you could get into creating an admin area to where you create a form in HTML that allows you to easily submit to it by using a web page and clicking a submit button and editing them, but we're not going to get into that. Uh, that kind of goes beyond the scope of the, the tutorial. We just want to keep this simple. Um, so editing and adding, removing the quotes. Well, it looks like my mouse is about to die. One second. All right, back. But yeah, so this is where you would edit all of your uh, your entries and add them and remove them, delete them, whatever. All right, so now the next step is we're going to get up the, uh, we're going to create a file structure uh, for the PHP documents that we're going to create that will uh, randomly pull these from the database. So I, I have uh, my directories up here. This is the project directory we've been working in. I'm going to create a new folder called HTML. All right. And inside there, that's where we're going to uh, place our different P our PHP file that is essentially going to connect to the MySQL database and pull from it and print uh, a random quote. So I this next part you can use uh, in HTML or code editor if you have one. If you don't, you can use Notepad or WordPad or whatever. Um, it's, all it is is just text for this coding. Uh, so I like to use uh, what's called um, sublime text editor and right here and I currently have opened the folder that we just created from here and so what we want to do is create a new file so file new file and we'll go ahead and save this control s and I'm not currently in the right folder so one second there we are and we're in the right folder that we just created and we're gonna call this one db.php and what this is, is DB short for database, and you can name it really whatever you want, uh, but we need to basically connect to the database in this sp file specifically here. So when you're connecting, you have basically four different variables that you have to define. Um, so to begin a PHP document, you have to open it up with a tag like this. and then close it. All of your code in, goes inside right here. Uh, so this next step, I'm just gonna paste in the uh, the code that we're gonna use instead of sitting here typing it all out, and I'll explain it. So I'm just gonna hit Control V to paste this in. Oops, I already had the PHP tags there. And I'm gonna take all this and indent. Uh, so basically, we have to create the connection. Uh, this is a variable name right here. All variables are started by creating a, uh, a dollar sign and then the name equals MySQL, MySQLI connect. And this is where you have to specify your host, username, password, and database name. So again, all this information is available to you in your host's control panel. And so this is where you wanna put that information. Uh, and then to check the connection, if this is the part where it actually executes the connection right here. And then this basically means if it failed, then Echo failed to connect to MySQL. Uh, so something important to note is that the database name and such are case sensitive. So make, make sure that you have that correct. So I'm going to go ahead and put in my real variables uh, in a second. Uh, but I'm going to put in first uh, a new 
document, file new, and we're going to save this, control S, and we're going to call this just index.php. And then we're going to include this right here at the top of this page. So first let's open up the PHP tags. And then I'm going to put in require once and then db.php and then semicolon to end that line. And then save this. And I've just put in my actual data here, so I'm going to close that. All right, so now it's connected to the database at this point with our file. Now we actually have to grab the results from this table right this table right here, quotes, and we have to only make it choose one random result, and then we'll print it out and display it. And we'll be able to visit the page in the browser uh, to see it work. So we have to set up our query. So we're going to give it a variable of query equals quotes select all from quotes, which is the name of our table, order by rand, and that's short for random, limit one, and then end the quotes and semicolon. Then we put in result equals mysql i underscore query and then we put in the connection variable from the db.php which is con which connects to the database and then query from above and then we put while row equals mysql i underscore fetch underscore array result which is what we just previously defined then open up brackets and put print json encode and then row equals the name of our uh, specific column we want to print which is quote and then end the uh, put a semicolon at the end and that's all so now you save this and you upload it to your FTP so there are different FTP uh, applications out there um, Basically, we have two files here. We want to drag this over and upload it to the server. And again, your FTP information all can be found from within your uh, your host's control panel, and you could set up an FTP username and all that. Uh, so I have mine stored on a folder called uh, Quote Fuel off of designcourse.com. And so I'm going to bring that over here real quick. And so I'm just going to go to designcourse.com forward slash Quote Fuel and then enter. Oopsie, sometimes that happens. One second. It says on line 10, there was unexpected. Yeah, this is line 10 right here. Yeah, there should not be an equal sign in there. There we go. Let me just upload that again real quick. All right, we'll bring back our uh, page right here. And there we go. So if we hit refresh, You'll see it'll select a random uh, document, or not document, but a uh, quote as seen here. The more you have, the less likely you're going to, you know, do two in a row, which can definitely happen. All right, so that is it for this tutorial. Uh, in the next lesson, we're going to go ahead and get back into Android Studio and connect this uh, to the button click event and make it show up in that text view that we have. All right, I'll see you then.